الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاسياء واصحاب الاتقياء اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي يقبل التوبه عن عباده ويعفو عن السيئات ويعلم ما تفعلون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو عملتم خطايا حتى تبلغ السماء ثم ندمتم كتاب الله عليكم رواه ابن ماجه Last week we were discussing the importance of repentance and the method of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we are in need to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there are some aspects of repentance that still need to be discussed in the Kitab al-Tawbah as Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah has mentioned in his book is spread over almost 20 or 30 pages and like we mentioned the depth Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah goes into when he chooses a topic the way he nitures it and the way Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah goes to the bottom of the ocean and pulls out every pearl that could possibly be there and turns every stone over to answer the questions that a person could have in their mind when they discuss the subject sometimes it is hard to discuss these matters in words in front of a crowd. So again we advise to refer to the book of Imam Ghazali for the, for the great detail. However Imam Ghazali when a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he should bear in mind Imam Ghazali he says that sins are of two types. First ma ta'alaq billahi ta'ala then ma ta'alaq ibad that there are sins of two types. The first sin is that sin which relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person is disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is violating the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second sin is that sin in which a person he violates the right of the servant, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, for the right that is violated in the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this a person that repents and is sincere in his repentance and he meets the criteria of repenting, his sins will be forgiven. For the person who violates the right of another person, it is his job to make sure that he seeks repentance, he, he seeks forgiveness from that person. He turns to the person and he tells him that this is what I did and, I, and I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for what I did, I, I, I ask forgiveness for you. So, but this sin cannot be forgiven unless a person, he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he seeks forgiveness from this person and then also repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes in the hadith the Prophet sallallahu says, يُفْرُ لِلشَّهِيدِ كُلَّ الدَّمْ إِلَّا الدَّيْنِ That for the martyr, every sin is forgiven except for the debt he owes. Meaning that this debt, he will not be forgiven because it is a relation to another person. So in this word, in the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not is mentioning that the martyrs every single sin will be forgiven. The person who is martyred in the path of Allah, all of his sins will be forgiven except for except for the debt, except for dain. And in this word dain, in this word dain, also falls in all those things which relate to the rights of another person. So if a martyr who gives his life in the path of Allah, all of his sins are forgiven. But however, his sins are not forgiven, which he violated the rights of another person, he took the, he ate away the right of another person. If this even for, isn't forgiven, even for the martyr, then where did me and you stand? Meaning that a person, every time he commits a sin, every time a person, he violates the right of another person, it should be his top priority that he goes back to that person and he seeks forgiveness from him. It should be his top priority. Many times what happens is that, you know, we're sitting at the airport, and while we're sitting at the airport, every person that walks past, because we have nothing better to do, we begin to mock the people. This person who's mocking other people sitting at the airport, that every person that's walking past, he should be very careful. Because only Allah knows if he's ever going to see this guy's face ever again in his life. The person sitting at the, you know, the bus stop, or we're on the bus, and every person that walks in will begin to mock them. You should be very careful because only Allah knows if you're ever going to see that person again, and you'll never get the chance to seek forgiveness from that person. And if the person does not forgive you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also keep the forgiveness mokuf on this person's happiness. Meaning that on the Day of Judgment, until this person does not forgive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also not forgive this person. So now if a person, for example, is in a position where he violated the right of another person, but now he can't find this person. Now he realizes that, okay, I was sitting at the airport so many years ago, and I remember this one person walked past me, he had this description, when I saw him, I started laughing. And I started telling my friend, look at that guy. Or I started telling my friends, look at this guy on the bus, look at the way he's dressed. Or he started backbiting people. Backbiting and violating the rights of other people is not only to deal with Muslims, with any person, any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a Muslim steals from a Muslim, yes, his punishment is cutting off his hands. And likewise, if a Muslim steals from a non-Muslim, this punishment is still the same. The different, the, the, the hukum of Allah doesn't change with regards to a Muslim and a non-Muslim. So for example, if we cheat a person in our buying and selling, if we cheat a person, 
or if we cheat any person in our life, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, that doesn't matter. If you cheated a person, you will have to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment for cheating that person. Now for example, we, we heard in the talk that, oh, in order to get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, we must, we must um, seek repentance from the person whose right we violated first. So how do we go around this? I'm never going to find that person again. How am I going to find him? I saw him on the highway and he was driving past my car and I saw his car, it looked really funny. And I said, that guy may be something like this. I said a few words about this person. I don't even know who he was. I don't even see the number plate. How am I ever going to find this person? Or for example, we violated a person's right, but he's gone so far away that we can't contact him. Or for example, we violated someone's right and that person passed away. So what do we do now? So first of all, if the person is no longer there to you know, seek forgiveness from, but however his family members are behind, what we should do is first of all, we should take care of that person's family members. So for example, if our, if our cousin, we, we violated his right, or one of our family friends, we violated his right, this person, when he leaves the world, if he passes away, we should now do good to that person's family. Because by doing good to that person's family, in reality, we are making that person happy, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that person happy in the hereafter, and that person will forgive your sins. First thing. No, forgive you, forgive your wrongdoing too. The second thing, if that person is not, if that person is not alive, and his family members are also not knowing, or for example, you have no idea where this person is, what you should do is seek repentance on that person's behalf. Seek repentance on that person's behalf. Ask Allah for forgiveness on that person's behalf. Or the second thing is give sadaqah and pray to Allah that the reward is given to that person. However, if the person is not a believer, then it is not permissible to make dua for that person. So we will make dua. For, we will make dua. Hidayah. We will pray that oh, Allah guide that person. So for example, if I was walking in the mall and I saw someone that was dressed very awkwardly and I made fun of the person. Now later on when I realized the, 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 how big of a sin I committed and now I need to repent to Allah but my repentance is based on that person's forgiveness. So now what? So what this person will do, he will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the person. He will beg Allah to guide the person and only Allah knows who to guide when to guide. There's a very big scholar who came to, if I remember the incident correctly, he came to Jinaid Baghdadi. And he said to him that, I, I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my sins. Now this person was a hakim. He was a very big, he was a governor. He was one of the great, he was a governor of his time. So he came to Junaid Baghdadi, he said, I repent for my sins. I, 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 I leave the life way I had. So Junaid Baghdadi asked him, what did you do before? So he said that I was a governor. So Junaid Baghdadi said that if you're a governor, that means I can't even imagine how many people's rights you must have broken. Your job is to go back to the people of that town and beg every single person for their forgiveness. Once you beg the people for their forgiveness, and once they forgive you, thereafter you can take the next step to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But until you violated other people's rights and you haven't um, gained forgiveness from them, then the reality is there still is many, there are still many gaps between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the sins are there as barriers, and these sins stop a person down from getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when a person he repents to Allah with regards to the sins that, 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 are, that, 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 um, that, that are related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, he misses the salat, for example, he does something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered him, to do, ordered him to do, he doesn't fast, he doesn't give his zakah, he doesn't, he's not performing his hajj. So if, with regards to these sins, or he's listening to music, or he's talking to the opposite gender, or he's on drugs, or he's doing immoral things, whatever the sin may be, he's disobeying his parents, he's disobeying his parents first of all is related to his parents, and then it's related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if he's committing a sin that is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now this person, he brings into existence all the conditions that are connected to tawbah, we mentioned last week, there are three conditions to tawbah. The first is, to leave the sin. The second is, to, to hate it, nadama, and the third is to, never go back to it ever again. So three things. The first is, tarkul ma'asiyah, the second is, nadama alayha, and the third thing is, al-azma la yarji alayha. The three things that, come, that, that constitute to, 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 to correct tawbah as, as Imam Nawi Ali mentions in his Riyadh al The first thing is to leave the sin. The second is to have sorrow over the sin. And Hassan Basri says that how much sorrow should he have? He should have so much sorrow as, as much as he loved it before he committed the sin. How much love he had for that sin before he committed it, he should have the equivalent amount of hatred towards it after he, when, he, when he's repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorrow. And the third is that he promises Allah that he will never return to that sin. So when a person, when he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and other scholars have added more conditions, for example, some scholars say that he closes off all the pathways that will ever lead him to the sin again. For example, he has friends and he knows whenever he gets together with his friends, he always commits the same sin, so he leaves these people too. Or for example, he knows that you know whenever he has a laptop to himself in his room, he commits a sin. Or if he has internet access in his house, he's going to commit the sin. Then until he doesn't remove the internet from his house, and he starts using the internet in the library, accommodating the, himself to the hours of the library, until he doesn't leave the pathway to the sin, his sin will not be forgiven. 
This is also a fourth condition the scholars have. For example, a person he has CDs, he should break them. For example, he has those videos on his on his on his on his on his, on his, on his computer laptop, he should go and rub them away. Once a person adopts all the conditions to repentance, now it is his duty to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. 